Mr. Speaker, there are also very serious concerns that in October 2016, the FBI and DOJ used politically biased, unverified sources to improperly obtain a FISA warrant to spy on an American citizen. This warrant granted U.S. intelligence and law enforcement agencies sweeping power to collect bulk information and conduct about collection, which results in surveillance of a broad array of private communications from the past, present, and future, including those of U.S. citizens not specifically targeted in the FISA-authorized warrant. To obtain these warrants, FBI and DOJ officials submitted an unverified dossier prepared by Christopher Steele to the FISA court failing to disclose that Christopher Steele was hired by the firm Fusion GPS, which was hired by the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton campaign to prepare this dossier, and that the source was unreliable and soon thereafter was going to be terminated as an asset. The FISA court was not informed that Christopher Steele was actively opposed to the election of Donald Trump, that he was the unnamed source cited in the media reports that the FBI used to corroborate his dossier, and that Fusion GPS had been hired to perform previous anti-Trump research efforts in 2015. The Woods procedures, which are the FBI's mandatory vetting process required for all FISA warrant applications instituted to ensure that all facts contained in an application are accurate and verified to clearly support probable cause for the warrant, it was clearly not followed. Former Director Comey then admitted in sworn testimony to the Senate Judiciary Committee on June 8, 2017, that material contained in the Steele dossier was known to be both salacious and unverified. Since FISA applications are rarely turned down and almost never subject to appeal, are presented in closed court with no public record where the government is not challenged by any defense, it is imperative that the government take extra care to validate the information being utilized to build their case before they take the extraordinary step of waiving rights of a U.S. citizen without his or her knowledge or the opportunity to defend themselves. These are secret documents submitted to a secret court to spy on an American citizen. The government has a responsibility not only to provide the best evidence they have in support of their case, but to also provide the best evidence that they have against their case. These deeply flawed and questionable FISA warrant applications, utilizing illicit sources and politically biased intelligence, were approved by DOJ and FBI officials at the highest levels before being submitted to the FISA court. It was further not disclosed to the FISA court, as I referenced earlier, that the wife of the fourth-ranking DOJ official, Bruce Orr, was an employee of Fusion GPS, and Christopher Steele directly transmitted the dossier and other information to Bruce Orr, through Bruce Orr, for submission to the FISA court. Let's talk about how and why the Trump-Russia probe began. Mr. Speaker, make no mistake, the Trump-Russia probe was launched because Donald Trump won the GOP nomination for President of the United States. It's clear why DOJ and FBI didn't want to turn over the memo opening the investigation. They didn't come up with a sufficient alternative justification to start the probe. The Trump-Russia probe was then continued because Trump became very close to possibly being elected President of the United States. It's clear why DOJ and FBI didn't want the Nunes memo released. They broke the rules and misled a FISA court to improperly secure a warrant to spy on a U.S. citizen. The Trump-Russia probe then became a special counsel probe because Donald Trump subsequently won the election. And the FBI director then illegally leaked classified info to the media to trigger a special counsel appointment. 